two parts. Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today, we're going to start a new project. We're going to make a shoulder holster for this percussion 44 caliber pistol. So, it'll be uh, a few episodes long. So, stick around with us and come on in. And let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with a just a 20 by 26, I believe it is, or 22 by 28 is what it says on there. Uh, piece of poster board, and this is what I like to make my patterns out of. Uh, we'll take the percussion cap, black powder, 44 pistol, and this. Uh, this is a reproduction, um, so it, it's brand new. It's, it's not original by no means. But uh, we'll, we'll take it, and that's what we'll start our pattern with. Uh, I like to lay it out as far as the holster goes. I like to lay it out where I have plenty of material on this side. Then I... I like to tip my pistol up on end and then put a mark right in the center of the hammer and right in the center of the barrel on the other end. And then what that's going to do is that's going to give me a really good idea of where the center will be to start my holster so I can take a straight edge I know I don't have to make it any longer than that and I can draw a line and that'll be the center of my holster when it folds over Now obviously my holster's not going to be, when it's folded over, it's not going to have a, a crease in it or anything. That'll be rounded. Uh, that'll leave plenty of room for the barrel. This is an octagon barrel. Plenty of room for the barrel and the sight at the end. Then what I can do is just measure from the center out. And I've got about seven and five eighths, seven and a half. So we'll go seven and a half inches from the center line to the left of that line. So I'll do it at the bottom and I'll do it at the top. And then I'll draw another straight line. that's actually where I'll cut it. I did get, you see this darker cutting mat, I did get a darker cutting mat. Um, you can use a straight edge if you want or you can just follow your line. I'm just going to follow my line. This is not too critical since we're going to be cutting this again anyway. I can keep it on my cutting mat and then so here's the piece that I'm going to use you can see my center line on there and then what I'm going to do is to attach this to the shoulder rig I'm actually going to do it uh, on the back part will have a spot here to attach it so until I get that all designed out on my pattern, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this around freehand. It's not super important. I just want to make sure I have plenty of material. 
So I'll cut that freehand on this pattern material. And then that gives me plenty of excess down here past my stopping point where my hammer was. That gives me all this material down here to finish my pattern of where I'm going to attach that to the shoulder rig itself. So I can put away my excess pattern material. And get that out of the way. And then I can go ahead and put the gun back on top of that line. And I'm going to put my sight right on that line in the middle of my hammer on that line where I marked it. Um, and at this point I can go ahead and roll that over and I want to keep it from moving side to side and then I can go ahead and outline that. And I like to hold that steady And then I use a ballpoint pen, and I like the type that are real smooth, have a smooth barrel on them, so that it follows the gun really well. And then when I get to the, the peak of that radius, I'll come back to this radius and start it. And I will go around the trigger, even though I'm not going to carry it that far, at least on the front. And then what that does is that allows me to go ahead and take this high point and this high point and then just match them up with a straight line. And that helps give me plenty of room for that to go down in there into the leather. And then I can do the same thing with the end I can just follow that line that came off of the barrel. And then if you want to do the same thing on the other side, you can do the same thing, except you roll the gun to the other, opposite, to the right. So you could do that, or you could do what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and measure out what I think I need as far as room for stitching. Then I'll go ahead and cut this side, fold it over, and then use this side as my pattern on this side. That way I know they're going to be exactly the same. And the way I do that normally is I allow, you can go ahead and fold that over and get an idea how much you're going to need for stitching outside of this actual line. Um, I like to go start out three quarters of an inch from this line. Then I can always cut more off my pattern. Once I get my pattern made, if it looks like that's too much, I can always cut more off of there. Um, so what I like to do is take my ruler and go three quarters of an inch away from my line that I just drew. And sometimes I'm cutting with my right hand. Uh, I'm ambidextrous, so I'm cutting with my right hand. Um, 
marking or drawing with my left hand and you'll see that a lot and uh, it, it gets a little cumbersome when you're trying to uh, make a pattern or do work on the cutting surface and stay out of the camera's way. That's why you'll see me change camera angles sometimes. Sometimes I'll be on the left, sometimes I'll be on the right. I just it just depends on what I'm doing and what might be best for that shot that day. And then what I do is I just work my way up. So I'm making a uh, dotted line basically and that's what I'm going to uh, connect are all those marks all those dots that are three quarters of an inch away from that actual line. So you can see those dotted lines, dashed lines, and then I'll just take my pen and you can use a straight edge if you want. Especially on the ones that are on the barrel that are nice and straight. Now when you get to the corners you're going to have to freehand that or find you uh, some type of uh, mold or something that you can use as a pattern to go around those corners um, I just like to freehand it Remember, um, you're giving that three quarters of an inch outside of your actual size of your gun, knife, whatever it is that you're making the holster or sheath for. You're giving that extra material there so that you have room to s stitch that. If you didn't, it might come down and touch, but you're not going to have enough space to put your stitching or your grooving or anything in there. And I am going to actually stamp, do some stamping on this too. So, uh, And I have to remember, it is a shoulder holster, so it will be a cross-draw type holster. So he's right-handed. So it, the holster will be on his left hand side. So I have to keep that in mind too as I make this pattern. So now I can take my knife. I can follow that line that I just made, that outside line. I just take my time. Make sure I have a good sharp blade. And as I get to the end of my mark, remember I don't know exactly how I want this pattern to come out as far as where I'm going to stitch that to the shoulder harness. So. I'm still going to cut this out way up here and give myself plenty of room. So let's cut that off at the top. Get that out of our way. We don't need that. Now, as you can see, I've got this edge here. That's where my leather's going to meet. Now I can go ahead and fold this over. 
on that line and that will give me an idea how that pistol is going to fit in there. So I can put that down and you got to remember I'm also going to have the same amount on the other side where it's going to come and meet and stitch up. So that's where you fold that over. That's going to give you an idea. Do you need to pull it a little more so that you have a little extra? And those will squeeze together, remember, uh, as we put those two pieces together. So I can pull that toward me if I need a little more, or if I need less, I can always cut more off my pattern. So I could take that out, and if if I do fold this over and trace that and cut it out and find out that it's too much, I can always just cut more off. The key is to make sure that you make it at least big enough to fit the gun. You can always cut more off. And then I can just roughly mark around the top. So now I can cut this side out by following that pattern line that I just mirrored on the other side. move this back onto my cutting mat and then I can get rid of that piece so remember this is going to be right hand draw on his left hand side so this would actually be the front, so I'm going to mark that as the front. I'll mark this side, I'll just put body, that way I know that side's to the body. And then the next thing I'm going to do for the pattern is put this put the gun back in there fold that pattern over to where it matches and then that's where I'm going to find out where I want to cut out the front of it to have access. So I want my trigger to have to have access to that. So right about here we're gonna come up and I just keep looking underneath see where my trigger is and where my cylinder is and again this is one of those things that 
you can always cut more off of your pattern so don't be afraid to leave a little extra because if you cut it too short basically you got to start all over again and with this being going on a shoulder rig I'm gonna mark this down to about where this folds right here and stop so I'm not going to continue cutting that. At that point, I'll just round that and start back up toward the top. And that will allow me all that in the back to use to attach to the rig. And then I'll just mark it on the end here. And that gives me a mark to extend my straight edge and you notice my cut for that or my line comes right out to about the middle of where I had my center drawn so it's pretty close that, the reason I do that center mark is that gets me really close And I can match those marks up, and then I can go ahead and cut that out. And then you'll be able to see a lot better on the pattern what that's going to look like. So as soon as I get this cut out, this part again is scrap. There's the top. I can hold that together. slide my pistol down in there and that gives you an idea now where that's gonna fall so you can see the trigger and the trigger guard is accessible so as he goes to draw that or cross draw it from underneath his left side he'll be able to access the trigger and the hammer is going to fall right on the outside I don't know if you can see that see how it just barely hangs out so he'll be able to access the trigger and the trigger guard and the hammer as he pulls the gun out of the holster so I'm real happy with that the next thing I want to do is I don't care much for this square edge right here so what I like to do is I like to take some type of pattern and again I've used these before little things like this that are just pieces off of things that have broken instead of throwing them away if they have nice angles and radiuses on them I like to take those and keep them and then I like to use those for things like this to where I can use that, cut that out. You're going to see how much of a difference this makes in not leaving that square. I just think it's ugly leaving it that way bring this over to where we get this matched up perfect fold it over hold it nice and tight draw the line on the other side of the pattern
Cut that side out. Now, when we fold that back over, now you can see we don't have that hard pointed edge right there. We've got a nice little radius. And we still have plenty of room for that to stitch down there and to fit in. So the only other thing we have left for the holster pattern is to cut out how we're going to want this at the top up here to mount to our shoulder harness. Um, there's several ways you can do it. I've seen where people just make it around, basically a round circle. Uh, I want mine on this particular one, I want it to uh, be adjustable. But I think I'm going to make the shoulder harness part adjustable so you could uh, be able to take the uh, holster and move it so uh, depending on the size of the person so what I want to do is I want to make this part up here not I don't want it to interfere with drawing of the weapon but I can't make it too long or it's going to hang down too far so I got to be really careful about how I make this part right here so I'm going to have to find something to use as a pattern on this piece up here. Um, and sometimes it's as simple as uh, a roll of tape. Um, I'd rather it not be perfectly round. So I'm going to have to find something that... Uh, Maybe I kept this empty core off of some tape that I had just because I thought the size was unique. So I might be able to put that up here at the top and use that. as my radius at the top end and then it's going to take something a little bit bigger than that on the other side so maybe I can go with the larger tape roll. And it's, some of this is trial and error. Um, you just have to try it and, and see. Um, it's all, you know, free-handed design. There you can see my marks of how I used that. This part here would have the holes in it so that you could actually move it. So you could put your leather... Uh, stitching through that and move it and that'll make a lot more sense when you see the pattern for the shoulder holster so I'm going to go ahead and I feel pretty comfortable with that I'm going to go ahead and cut that out And then I'm going to have to kind of dry fit that and look 
and see what that feels like as far as length of how that would hang down. Now the guy I'm making this holster for is bigger than I am. He's taller than I am too. So without him actually being here and me changing this pattern right off of him, I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of uh, fitting and try and decide how far up it can go this part or do I need to cut more off. Um, remember you want the bottom of this piece you really want it to be able to attach to your belt so you don't get this type of movement especially or this type of movement when you're trying to pull the gun. So and it is a fairly long barrel. Let me it's a seven and a half inch barrel. So uh, that's a fairly long pistol to be carrying under your arm. But uh, I know we can make this work. I can probably make that smaller. Uh, I know I can cut more off of this back piece here. I just don't want this right here. I don't want that to interfere with drawing the gun. So I am going to make this smaller. Because there's no reason to have all that excess. leather out there. So I'll cut that radius again. Be very careful. Take off small amounts at the time when you're making these custom patterns. See how much I took off. And then I always check it again. Every time I make a cut on a pattern, I always check it to make sure. And you can see how much nicer that looks against that behind that uh, trigger guard. It doesn't stick way out here for no purpose. And actually, it made this look a lot nicer, but I still say I can get this down to here and it not affect this. Because it's nice and rounded right here, there's no sharp edges or corners. So I'm going to do the same there. I'm going to take about the same amount off on that. I'll go ahead and cut that. And let's take a look at that one and see what what that does for us. And again, with these patterns, when you're making them a custom pattern, uh, you just have to, it's trial and error, so you just take a little bit at a time, fold it back over, put your knife or your gun back in the pattern, and check it out and see how it fits. So I think we're good here. It looks good there. And I think we're good back here. That attaching that there should not interfere with drawing this in and out of the holster. And we'll go ahead next time and 
do our shoulder harness and then that way we'll know where to punch our holes in our holster pattern. All right, so we've got our holster pattern made. This is the first part of this shoulder holster build. And we've got the pattern for the pistol itself made. And you can see this would go right here on this side. And it would be a right hand cross draw. So the pattern turned out good. And as you can see, when you're making a custom pattern like that, you just have to make little tweaks uh, so that it fits uh, whatever you're making that pattern for, fits it perfect. Uh, so this part is finished. Next time, when you come back, we will be making the shoulder harness pattern for the harness piece. So you want to make sure you come back and check that out. Then we'll start putting those pieces together, cutting the leather, and uh, should be a pretty nice rig. So like I always say, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <music>